Hello, this is Jordan. This video is being recorded on Thursday, August 4th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me. And in this video, I am going to analyze and discuss the real price of gold, which appears to be trending higher. And when we're talking about the real price of gold, we're analyzing how gold is performing against other asset classes and other markets. And this is important for two reasons. First, when gold is outperforming other assets and uh, other asset classes and other markets, uh, it tends to be a leading indicator for the gold price in dollars. Secondly, when the real price of gold is trending higher, in other words, when gold is outperforming commodities, oil, stocks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, it's an indicator that the profitability of gold mining is about to increase. So real price of gold, very important, and it looks to be trending higher. So first, uh, here we look at how gold is performing against the S&P, commodities, and foreign currency. So not everything, but uh, some important asset classes here. And let's start with gold nominally. So gold at the top, uh, gold, there's... We, we can see that 1900, I mean, going back uh, before this year, 1900 was important monthly and quarterly resistance. We had a false breakout. Uh, we came all the way back down to 1700. Uh, but now, even just looking at this daily chart, we can see 1900 is a very significant level. Uh, and before that, um, I know the 200-day moving average is around 1840, but the, the second red line there, the lower one, the dashed one, that comes into play at around 1835 to 1840. So to me, those are the two important resistance levels for gold right now. And, you know, obviously, if gold uh, strengthens here, I mean, the real price, uh, and it strengthens significantly, that's going to help gold surpass those resistance levels. And it's also going to prevent gold from going below uh, 1675. So let me look at the individual charts. So moving down, we have gold against the stock market. I mean, I've done lots of videos about this over the past five, six, seven years. So this is very important. Look in 2018, how that began to strengthen. Uh, well, actually it strengthened. Uh, well, that's an interesting thing about the 2018 bottom is gold bottom nominally around the same time uh, that it bottomed in real terms. But this time is different because if we look at gold against the stock market, you know, that put in its low at the end of 2021 and, and gold made a lower low since that point. So gold against the s and I'm thinking there could be two outcomes here. You can see the two arrows. Uh, the more bearish outcome would be, let's say the Fed is able to tighten in September. They plan on tightening in November. That could give the market another two months or so of thinking that there's going to be tight policy. Anything that reinforces the Fed doing more tightening than expected or at least meeting the lofty expectations right now is going to be bearish, I think, for gold relative to the stock market. And also, in the event, let's just say the rally in the S&P and the stock market, maybe it carries above the 200-day moving average, maybe gold weakens. So in those scenarios, I could see uh, this uh, ratio chart coming down, retesting the low, and making a double bottom. Because eventually, I think the Fed is going to have to shift policy and cut rates. That's going to be very bullish uh, for the gold to the stock market ratio. Now, the more bullish outcome is, you know, we see the ratio is holding above the 200-day moving average right now. The more bullish outcome would be as as the weeks go by in August and we get into September, the thought comes in that this is going to be the last hike. The economic data is getting bad. You know, the yield curves are really inverting badly. You know, Maybe the three-month to the 10-year inverts pretty solidly. Um, so if, if we see those kinds of developments before the Fed get, gets to the September meeting uh, and the market starts to think and consider that September could be the last hike and that they're going to have to cut, you know, maybe in December, that scenario, you could see the little rally that we're seeing right now. You could see that extend. And as a result, you could see the gold against the S&P ratio extend higher in the more bullish uh, 
outcome that I projected there. Again, to get that strong arrow moving higher, considerably higher, it's probably going to coincide with the Fed cutting rates. Now, below that, we have gold against commodities. This is an equal weight commodity basket. GCC is the ETF. Because when you look at gold against oil, which I have in the next chart, it's almost a carbon copy of gold against the CRB. So this is gold against equal weighted commodities, I should say. And uh, look, you know, that that ratio, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, that ratio has come up and popped above the 200-day moving average today. It might have did that for one day, I think, last November. But we can see it's testing the 200-day moving average there. So if 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 this move is sustained, that's going to be another positive for precious metals. So that's something to keep an eye on, gold against commodities. Gold against foreign currencies, another way to look at that is gold multiplied by the U.S. dollar index. The recent low... Uh, bottomed at a rising 200-day moving average. You know, moving averages are important, but what's especially important is the slope of the moving averages. Are they going sideways? Are they trending up? Are they trending down? Sloping up and down, I should say. Gold against foreign currencies, the 200-day moving average is sloping up, and gold has been able to bounce and extend the bounce. Uh, gold against foreign currencies, that's only 6% below its 2022 high, and it's probably, I'd have to check, but it's probably at the same level that it was in 2020. So if you want to make another 2013 comparison, gold against foreign currencies, it did collapse with the gold price in early 2013. But, you know, we really haven't seen that because, again, it's right now it's only 6%, or maybe it's 5%, I don't know, 5 or 6% off the recent high, trading at the same level as the 2020 peak. So that just goes to show you Gold is holding up really, really well in the face of a strong U.S. dollar. So the real price, I mean, with respect to these things, it's it's trending higher, and we're looking at how it can potentially extend that trend to the upside. Again, it's, if that is going to happen sooner rather than later, it's probably going to coincide with, with worse economic data and the Fed having to pivot much sooner than they want, much sooner than the market thinks. And and so again, I, I think the stock market, the weaker it gets, the worse that everything gets, that is going to be better for gold and precious metal. You know, gold specifically, silver will follow, but gold and gold stocks, capital is going to flow into those areas if we get worse and worse economic data. You know, the bond market continues to rally, the curves get badly inverted. Uh, that's the stock market rolls over. It's trending towards lows. That's good for precious metals because it's going to lead to a much easier Fed that has to cut rates. Um, so just a couple more charts to look at here. We have the same gold chart. Gold against copper, that already broke out uh, a couple months ago. And what I noticed is if you look at gold against copper, that bottomed. It looks like it bottomed uh, very, very end of 2017 made a slightly higher low in May of 2018. So that actually bottomed before the sector did in August of 2018. And look at the gold oil ratio. That, excuse me, <clears throat> gold oil ratio, that did not bottom until October 2018, which was two months after uh, gold bottomed in August. And as we know, oil has been on fire uh, until recently. But look, gold against oil ratio, It's it today it closed above the 200 day for the first time in potentially two years, although it might have in December of 2021. But, you know, nevertheless, if we see a little extension to today's strength, that's going to indicate something that we haven't seen in the last two years. So gold against oil, really significant move there. Gold against copper, uh, that's already broken out. As I pointed out in the last cycle, gold against copper bottomed and performed well before gold against oil. But gold against copper, it's already at you know near a two-year high 18-month high whatever it is golden oil appears to have bottom just starting to get going so uh that's uh that's basically it for this video i don't want to make it longer than it needs to be uh gold the real excuse me the real price of gold is starting to trend higher we have to keep an eye on that because it can be a leading indicator for gold the gold price and secondly uh, it's a, it's also an indicator of 
the profitability of the mining companies. So a little bit of good news here in the precious metal sector. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys again in the next video.